Hello everyone and welcome to the Kiki London YouTube channel. My name's Amanda and in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys a build a gel overlay on natural nails. So in this video I'm going to be working on my own nails. I really hope you all enjoy watching. If you do then please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. To begin with, I have already done a lot of the cuticle and natural nail prep. However, I have got a dedicated prep video up on the Kiki London channel. So I will leave that linked in the description box below for you to check out. Now I'm going to start off today's video by taking down a little bit of the length on my natural nails. Now this is because I have slightly broke the nail on my pointer finger. So it's a little bit shorter than the remaining nails and I do want them to match as much as possible. So I'm just going to use the 180 grit side of the file just to shape them a little bit and take down a little bit of that length. Now like I said we're going to be doing a builder gel overlay on today's video. And a lot of the reason people get a builder gel overlay is because their own nails are quite weak or damaged damaged or because they're trying to grow them out. Now for me I have quite a bit of damage to my nails at the moment. I've just got back from a couple of days camping and my nails really did take a bit of a beating. At the start of the video you could see I was pointing out some of the damage that's on my thumbnail and also my natural nails are quite thin to be honest so I find doing a builder gel overlay gives them that little bit of strength and helps my gel polishes to last. So if you do have clients who are maybe struggling to grow their natural nails or you are finding that their nails are quite weak and even a rubber base coat system isn't helping them because they do really need that little bit of extra strength, I would highly recommend giving a builder gel overlay a go on them. You can still do all of your nail art or your gel polish designs on top as well. So now that I've filed the nails down, I'm just taking a brush and I'm going to brush away all of the dust. And this is where I also do come back in with my file to neaten up any areas of the free edge that just need that little bit of extra filing. Sometimes you'll find you'll get a little bit of the natural nail underneath sticking up or anything like that. So I'm just making sure to get rid of all of that and that I'm happy with the shape. I've gone for quite a rounded shape because that seems to be the shape that my nails naturally grow in and especially with how short they are I wasn't really in a position to do too much shaping wise with them. Once I have finished filing I'm going to come in and give them a good scrub with one of the Kiki London alcohol pads. This is to remove any of the dust from the filing but it's also going to dehydrate the nails ready for the next step. And the next step is the primer. So I'm coming in with the Kiki London primer. This is going to prime the nails and basically get them ready for your base coat. It's gonna make sure that your base coat adheres really well to that natural nail plate. Now, when you're applying the primer, you only need a little bit. A little bit goes a very long way. And I like to really scrub it and work it into that natural nail plate. Now you do need to leave your primer to air dry. It doesn't take too long, I have to say a minute at max. And once it has dried, you'll see that the nails have a bit of a matte chalky effect to them. Then I'm gonna come in with my rubber base coat. Now the rubber base coat especially is really great for anyone with thin or weak nails. And I find it works really well in conjunction with the Kiki London Easy Build Up Gels. So it is my preferred base coat to use, especially when I'm working with the builder gels. Now, because it's a rubber base coat, it is ever so slightly thicker than your regular base coat. So I like to really work it in to that natural nail plate just so that I get a nice thin coat. Now, although we're wanting to build up the nails a little bit so we get that strength and structure, because my natural nails are quite short, I don't want them to end up too bulky. If I was working on a more medium length nail, I wouldn't stress too much about the thickness, but because they are quite short, Short nails tend to easily look quite bulky if you work too thick with your products. And I've still got to apply my builder gel and my gel polish color. So I'm wanting to keep this layer as thin as I possibly can. As you can see, when I come around the cuticle area on my little finger, because that natural nail is quite small, I'm turning my brush to the side. If you struggle doing this, I would recommend coming in with the Kiki London Round Nail Art Brush because you can then get a really nice, neat cuticle application. Now that I have applied and cured my base coat, we're ready to move on to the next step. Oh, and by the way, I did do my thumb off camera just because it's a little bit easier when it comes to recording. 
The builder gel I'm going to be using is the Kiki London Easy Build Up Gel in Nude Tone. Now Nude Tone has such a soft, subtle look to it. It's a really nice peachy nude colour and it's a colour that you could wear on its own. You don't necessarily need to put a gel polish colour over the top of this, especially if you wanted a nice, soft, natural look to the nails. Now I'm going to apply my gel overlay very similar to how I would do a gel extension. So I'm going to apply my wet slip layer Whilst that's still wet, I'm then going to come in with a thicker ball of gel and build up my thickness. Now, because we're doing an overlay and like I was saying, we don't want to build up too much thickness, I'm only coming in with a really small ball of gel. And I'm focusing this on, I'm not necessarily building up an apex like I would if I was doing an extension. I'm more focusing this on the free edge and the center of the nail because that's where I get a lot of my breakages. But you do still want to make sure that you get a nice, neat, even application. And I like to kind of cap my free edge with it as well, ever so slightly, just so that I can file the shape up a little bit more. Now another thing I want to point out is here you'll see I have got a little bit of product on my cuticle and skin area. It's really important that you remove this before curing. So I'm just removing that with my Kiki London angled nail art brush. Obviously it is better if you can avoid getting any on the skin in the first place, but sometimes these things happen. So let me talk you through doing this nail. I'm coming in with my wet slip layer. So this is a really, really thin layer of gel, but this is that layer where I really focus on getting a nice neat cuticle area and getting it nice and neat down those side walls. This is basically just a thin layer of gel that's gonna help your thicker layer of gel flow into place. Then I'm picking up a larger ball of gel. Now, like I said, although I'm saying larger, it's still a relatively small ball of gel because we're only working on a short nail. So with that ball of gel, I'm just working it from side to side, taking it down to the tip of the nail and then making sure I build up that tip free edge ever so slightly just so that I can buff and shape the nails a little bit more once we have finished. As you'll see, I'm not building up too much thickness. I do show you guys the side view as well. It's only built up an ever so slight amount of thickness and an ever so slight apex. The Kiki London Easy Build Up Gels, they self level absolutely beautifully. So when you are doing anything like an overlay like this, it's really, really easy because you don't really have to do too much. You're pretty much just floating on the gel once it does come to that second layer. Now there is another method I use for doing a gel overlay and if I was doing that method I would basically do a thin layer of gel, cure it and then do a second thin layer of gel. So I will try and do another video in the future showing you guys that method as well but this is the method I tend to use more often so I thought I would show you guys this one first. As you can see here, I'm being really careful when I'm applying my gel product. I don't want to get any on the skin and I'm only coming in with a small amount of gel. If you do end up needing more, you can come in and add more, but it's easier I find to come in with a small ball of gel to begin with because if you apply too much, it's really hard to remove that excess gel. So I would rather come in with too little and have to add more rather than come in with too much. Now I'm just going to show you guys this on three of the nails because I didn't want the video to be too repetitive because it is pretty much doing exactly the same on every nail for this set. So off camera I have also done the little finger and the thumb using that exact same method as I've showed you on the first three nails. I'm now going to come in with one of the Kiki London alcohol pads and remove the tacky inhibition layer that the gel leaves behind. And I'm doing this because I want to buff the surface of the nails just to make sure I've got a really nice even surface to work on top of. If you was happy with your gel application, you could skip this step and go straight to applying your top coat or your color coat. But I just like to come over and buff them into shape just a little bit. So if I have got any areas that are a little bit bumpy, I can smooth those out. So I'm using my Kiki London buffer and I'm just gently going over the entire nail, focusing on any areas that I feel are a little bit lumpy bumpy. You don't necessarily get too much of a lumpy bumpy surface with the Kiki London Easy Build Up Gels because they self level really, really nicely. 
I just wanted to make sure I was 100% happy with them before coming in with my gel polish colour. So I'm using the 180 grit side and I'm not necessarily over buffing them because we don't want to make them too shiny because otherwise our gel polish wouldn't stick to the surface. I'm also just neatening up that free edge a little bit. Now that there's a little bit more thickness from the product, it's a lot easier to shape the nails as such, especially when you are working on such short nails. Now this video, I've sped this section of the video up a little bit just so it wasn't too boring to watch. So it does look as though I'm being a little bit more rough and harsher with my file than what I'm actually being. But as you can see, I'm not taking down any of the thickness that we've built up. I'm just smoothing it all out. Now, if you was a beginner or new to builder gels or for whatever reason you had applied your product too thickly or too uneven and you were finding they was taking too long to get a smooth surface using your buffer, you could use a 180 grit file instead. But one thing to bear in mind is that the builder gels file really, really easily. So it's very easy to over file them when you are using a file. So that's why if I'm happy with my application and I just want to smooth it out, a little bit I'll opt to use my buffer rather than the file as you can see I'm really pulling my skin back when I'm working around the tip of the nail just so I can get right around that free edge and create the shape I'm happy with this is a lot easier to do when you are working on a client rather than yourself because you have a free hand to hold that skin back now, as you can see, these look really natural. You wouldn't necessarily know I had any product on my nails. So this is also a great product for anyone who might not be allowed to have any product on their nails. Maybe they're not allowed to wear colors for work, things like that. However, as much as I thought they looked pretty natural, I had to come in and add some color to them. So I'm using the gorgeous Violet Days from the new Spring Bling collection. Lilac, purple, it's my favorite color and this one has sparkles in it. So seeing as I was doing my own nails, I had to use this one. Now, not only is this a beautiful color, it's also really, really easy to work with. Sometimes glitter gel polishes can be a little tricky to work with because they have a thicker consistency compared to a regular color coat. So what I like to do is apply them nice and thin. So as you can see here, I'm removing quite a lot of that product from my brush, just so that I've got a small amount of product right at the tip of my brush. And that's because I want to apply a really thin layer and it just makes working with a glitter gel polish a lot easier. If you've got a small amount of product on the brush, you're able to really move it and scrub it into the nail and get a nice thin coat. I'm doing it this way because I'm gonna be doing two thin coats just so that that color really pops. Now the spring bling gels are really versatile if you want a more soft shimmer you can just come in with one thin coat and it will look how it looks here if you want a more intense color and more of an intense sparkle you can come in with that second coat which I'm going to do and it just gives a little bit more depth to the color and like I said it just really makes the glitters and the color pop Again, I always have my trusty angled brush on hand for any cleanups. I love this brush for cleaning up because it's quite stiff. So I just wipe it on my Kiki London alcohol pad and then I'm able to clean up any gel polish that I do get on the skin or the cuticles. Again, when you are working on such small nail beds like I am here, you can also come in with your smaller nail art brushes just to make sure you get a nice, neat cuticle line. Because I'm working on my own nails, I've kind of adapted to using the brush because I've done them so many times. So that's what one coat of color looks like. I'm then gonna pop that in to cure. And just look how sparkly it is. I do really like it with just one coat of color because it looks quite soft. But for this particular design, like I said, I just wanted something that really, really popped. So I'm gonna come in and apply a second coat of color. Now I'm applying this exactly the same as the first coat. I'm not applying too much product because we've already built up the nails with that easy build up gel. So we don't want them to end up too thick. Of course, if you're doing a gel overlay, they are going to be thicker than just two coats of gel polish. But if you're wanting to strengthen your nails or you're wanting to grow your natural nails, that little bit of extra thickness is really going to help your natural nails. 
So you'll see when I'm applying that product, I'm letting the brush fan out and do a lot of the work for me. When it comes to applying that second coat of color, I like to kind of float it on, especially when you're working with the glitter gels, because then you get a nice even coverage. And then as you'll see there as well, I do always like to cap that free edge because I find this really helps prevent any chipping at the free edge. This is just such a beautiful colour. I love how sparkly it looks as well. Once you have got that top coat on there, especially in daylight as well. I did these last night and I'm just recording the video now and I went out into the garden today and I could not believe the sparkle that these have. As always, if you check the description box below, I will leave a full list of all of the products I have used in the description box below, just in case I forget to mention any of them in the video. And I will also leave a link to the Kiki London website, which is where you can purchase all of the products I've used today. So this is what they looked like once I'd finished curing that second coat of colour. And I want to add a little sticker on to my ring finger just for a tiny pop of nail art. So I'm going to remove the tacky inhibition layer on that nail because I find that stickers apply a little bit easier when you've removed that tacky layer. So I've peeled my sticker off and I'm just using some tweezers to press it down. Now, because I've got rubber gloves on, I'm smoothing it out using my rubber gloves. But you could also smooth these out using a silicone tool as well. But it is really, really important that you make sure they are really smoothed out, that there's no creases or no areas that are sticking up because otherwise when it comes to top coating, you're not going to get a nice even layer of top coat. So do just take a little bit of time to make sure that that sticker has fully stuck down. Then because I've done the stickers, I'm going to come in and use the Kiki London No Wipe Rubber Top Coat just because I find this top coat amazing for sealing in any nail art because it's that little bit thicker. And again, because we're working on overlays and I'm wanting that additional strength to my nails, the rubber top coat especially is great for that as well. So I'm going to apply a really thin layer of that to all of the nails. Very similar to the rubber base coat, it's going to be slightly thicker than your regular top coat. But if you work it well into the nail, you can still get a nice thin even layer. When it comes to going over my stick art, you'll see I kind of just float it on to begin with and then smooth it out. This is just to make sure it fully encapsulates around that sticker. If I was using a regular top coat, I would double top coat, but I don't find that I need to do that when I'm sealing in nail art using the rubber top coat. Just making sure to apply a nice thin layer to all of the nails and then I can pop them in to cure. And then we're very nearly at the end of this set. So I just wanted to take a moment to say, I hope you all enjoyed watching this video. And it'd be really, really great that if you did enjoy it, if you could give the video a thumbs up or leave us a comment below. Let me know if there's any particular videos that you would like to see, whether it be working with gel polishes or nail art, tutorials, build a gel, whatever it is you would like to see, please let me know in the comments below and I will try and get it done. So for the final step in this set of nails, I'm going to come in with my Kiki London Sweet Peach Cuticle Oil. I absolutely love this cuticle oil. I've missed it whilst being away camping because it does work wonders on your nails. It's just such a beautiful product. It smells amazing and it leaves your cuticles feeling really nicely nourished and soft. So I always like to apply a generous amount and not only massage it around the cuticle, but go all around the side walls and under the nails as well, just to really replenish that skin. Now it is a little tricky to massage the cuticle oil in if you are wearing gloves, so I'm just doing my best here to get that rubbed in. And then this is what the finished result looked like. Now I absolutely love a long set of nails, I'm not gonna lie, but I thought these looked really, really cute. And I'm loving having that bit of extra strength on my natural nails, just to give them a chance to grow a little bit more without me having to worry or stress about any breakages or any further damage to them. So if you don't already, do follow me on Instagram and I'll try and post some progress shots as well so you can see how these grow out. Once again, thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe if you haven't already. And I shall see you all again in next Friday's video. Take care. Lots of love. Bye bye.